Welcome COGS. My newest project is a telepresence robot, a system which allows a user to remotely interact with the world through a robotic avatar. Now you can actually buy a telepresence robot, but mostly they're just iPads on sticks, made for the early Covid era when working from home was still a scary concept. Firstly, I wanted an immersive VR experience that would make me feel physically present in the robot, rather than just like I'm on a video call. Secondly, I wanted to be able to interact with the world from this new perspective. One of my inspirations was surgical robots, where a surgeon can remotely operate a series of tiny specialised hands using their own clunky, oversized human hands. But I wanted to feel what it was like to be immersed in that experience and transplant my consciousness into that machine. This video is my first attempt at a telepresence robot, which took me through mechanism design, Raspberry Pi, networking, VR development and electronics. As it's a work in progress, you will be able to download this prototype from my Patreon page linked in the description. So to start with, I wanted to talk a bit about this mechanism that I designed, a universal joint, which transmits rotation between two shafts that aren't necessarily in line. You guys know I'm always concerned about what parts can be found in what parts of the world because I want to make my projects as accessible as possible. So it bothered me that a lot of my early designs used off-the-shelf universal joints and ball socket joints that usually weren't standardised and were difficult to source, but projects involving seemingly organic natural motion often need to transmit motion in inconvenient ways. Maybe the motion is non-linear, maybe I'm trying to cram the mechanism into a really tight space, and so joints that can account for misalignment and move in multiple axes are usually really handy. In my last video you saw my deep dive into snap fit mechanisms, and I feel like the natural evolution of that is print in place mechanisms. The universal joint can be printed in place easily, readily assembled because the pivot points are cones. Any modern 3D printer will have no problem printing a 45 degree overhang, so whereas a cylinder almost always prints horribly in the wrong orientation, a cone prints great even without any support, and the holes top and bottom mean we can pop in any kind of snap fit linkage we like. So before getting too deep into the mechanics, I wanted to make sure I had all the video, hardware and software under control. I'm pretty good with mechanical design, but in all honesty, I kind of made a mess of this section, so forgive me if you actually know this stuff. I wanted the robot to be fully untethered, so an internet connection was the only option I thought could give me a truly worldwide range. But to simplify things initially, I decided to stick to my local network connection. This would have been a lot easier and lower latency with an FPV drone camera, but obviously you'd need to be in range of the robot and I wanted to have more flexibility than that. I started out using the Pi Zero because as I only wanted to send a single video feed over Wi-Fi, I assumed I wouldn't need too much computing power. As it turned out, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing at first with Linux, and so I kept crashing the poor thing and ruining the OS, so I dug out my old Raspberry Pi 4B, which was a lot more stable and allowed me to make more mistakes. I spent ages just trying to get the camera feed shown a preview. I was harassing ChatGPT for answers as I went, but I realised a lot of my issues were because recently the main library for using the Pi Cam changed from Pi Camera to Pi Camera 2, and most of the old tutorials I found were for the preview version. So after a lot of messing about, I eventually got a Python script, which was a collaboration between myself, ChatGPT and some other tutorials I'll link below, which took the camera feed from the Raspberry Pi and effectively streamed it to a Flask server on my local network. Flask, if you don't know, is a Python library which allows you to create lightweight web applications and servers. Now since I don't regularly use Python, I need a way to prevent myself from forgetting and just generally keep my mind sharp in a way that translates well to being a good programmer in the times between when I actually have a programming project on the go. My answer to that is the Brilliant app, which allows you to learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. Brilliant is effective with a teaching system that has been shown to be six times better than watching a lecture video, and with content crafted by a team of experts from MIT, Caltech, Google, Microsoft and more. I think I retain information so much better when I learn by doing rather than just trying to listen and memorise, and the bonus you get from learning that way is that you also become just a generally better thinker because you're actively solving problems, and by building a daily habit your knowledge and skills compound, and Brilliant allows you to do that with only a few minutes of learning per day. As I mentioned, I needed Python specifically for this project, so over this month I tried out Brilliant's programming with Python course. 
it gives you the ability to really start from the ground up with the drag and drop editor. So without any knowledge at all, you can truly start programming on day one. You'll learn all the essentials from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. And most importantly, in my view, you'll learn to think like a programmer and build a strong foundation for writing solid programs. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit my link in the description and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now I assumed that since I could view this feed in a browser, I'd be able to get this into Unity easily, but as it turned out, Unity couldn't really handle the format. I tried a lot of different things. The thing that I ultimately got to work was changing my Flash server to save a static JPEG to the Raspberry Pi's file system, which would be captured from the camera each time a request was sent. Unity can use this, but it's disgusting. I don't know too much about computer science, but my bro science says that having to save a snapshot to the Pi each time you want to update the frame and then Unity having to effectively refresh the web page for every frame is going to be laggy and at the very least low frame rate but in practice it was all of the above plus a lot of dropped frames and visual artifacts that were very disorienting. Unity can handle properly encoded MPEG video as far as I can tell so I think the solution would be to use something like the FFmpeg library in Python to put the video stream into something more standard than Unity can use but I was running out of time and I needed to look at the other parts of the project to refresh my mind at this stage. I have big ambitions for the robot this will eventually turn out to be, but for now I just wanted a simple platform to test the main movement axes of my VR headset. To put things in aircraft terms, because it's cool, the rotations I'm interested in are pitch, roll and yaw. The side to side motion of my head is yaw, and for that I use a single large servo motor in the first stage of the stack, rotating the entire assembly clockwise and counterclockwise. The other two rotations, pitch and roll, are controlled by two opposing servos working together. When they both move up or down in synchronicity, this produces pitch motion, and when they both move in different directions we get roll, and so by coordinating between the two we can get any position we want. This is where the universal joint I mentioned earlier comes in. We have a static linkage at the back, which is the main pivot point upon which the whole head rotates, and then the rest of the motion is produced effectively by the two other linkages shortening and lengthening. Since linear actuators are more expensive and likely slower, we're using servos, which means we need to convert that rotational motion into linear motion, and finally into three-dimensional motion in conjunction with the opposing motor. That's why we need universal joints, because the motion is complex. The design was mostly driven by the Raspberry Pi, Pi Cam, and its ribbon cable, so to make the VR experience bearable in spite of my horrendous incompetence with the Raspberry Pi, I switched to a wired webcam and designed a new housing for it. Much more bulky than I'd envisioned, but fine for now. Originally I wanted to have the Raspberry Pi communicate with my eye mechanism board from the last project. That way I had an excuse to perfect that board, but also a convenient way to decouple the motor control and power from the part of the system that's handling the networking and video streaming. Since I had to cut the Raspberry Pi out of the equation for now, it was convenient to use my eye mechanism board and connect directly to Unity, using the Uduino plugin like I did with my Bionic hand. And using JLC PCB, I was able to fix my design and now have something that works out of the box. The next step for it, which I'm really excited about, would be to actually embed the Arduino Micro into the board to have a truly standalone PCB. Arduino's designs are all open source, and you can buy the same chips from JLC PCB's website, so I'm excited to try designing my own modded Arduino with onboard server control. And perhaps I'll put a switch for different control modes on the eyes, maybe batteries and a charging circuit. There's so many possibilities. Circuit boards are cool, guys. If you watch my previous video, you'll remember that I still had some bugs with my PCB for my snap fit eye mechanism. Another piece of feedback you guys gave me is that you were unsure about the order process and also there were some issues with my placement files. So I'm going to quickly walk you through the order process. Firstly, you upload the Gerber file which contains information for the shape of the board, where the copper goes and how the hole should be drilled. Then you select assembly and on the next page you upload your BOM and CPL files. BOM stands for Bill of Materials and it's just a list of all the electronic components needed. CPL stands for Component Placement List and tells the manufacturer where each part will be located on the board. You should then be all set and ready to order the board, although please do remember that all of this is a work in progress and I can't guarantee I haven't made any mistakes. JLC PCB provide me with free PCBs for my projects so I'm massively thankful to them. They love a good coupon and right now they're running a promotion on 6 layer PCBs so if you're interested then you can get $20 off at the moment. So back in Unity, I did have a way to download an image from a website 
display this on a canvas and parent this to my VR headset, so the video feed would be effectively fixed in front of my face. Eventually I want to do this with stereoscopic vision, which I think would be the final piece of the puzzle for making this a truly immersive VR experience. The VR headset I'm using is an Oculus Quest 2, since I noticed them piling up in my local CEX. You can connect to Unity using a USB cable and the Questlink application, although it did take a lot of troubleshooting. In order to control the robot, I needed to access the orientation of the VR camera in Unity and translate this into angles which I could use to drive the servos in my robot. The logical starting point was the yaw, since I only have one motor for that and it should be a fairly easy translation. I didn't experiment extensively with syncing up the motion, but I got it to feel pretty much one to one. To keep it simple with the other axes of motion, I tread the pitch as my primary axis and programmed the two servos to move in response to a change in pitch on the headset, and then introduced a scaling factor so that the two servos would offset from each other by a particular amount to add roll to the pitch axis. It doesn't scale perfectly because the servos don't produce a perfect linear motion, they move in arcs which means that 5 degrees of motion in one part of the arc may produce much more or less motion than 5 degrees in a different portion of the arc. I think the most efficient way to control the robot based on these mechanical constraints would be to use maths to fully solve each axis, i.e. the rotation in the roll axis is equal to some function of each other server, but it didn't seem worth it for this pretty basic prototype. Another way to do it which feels more my style would be to simulate the mechanism in Unity, building the same mechanism with simulated joints and locking the VR headset input to the simulated head of the robot. Unity would then automatically calculate the motion with inverse kinematics and we'd be able to read the position of each each servo as I moved my head around and use that to drive the servos in real life. It would however likely be slower. Now clearly I have a lot of bugs to straighten out, but in terms of the overall system I have so many options of where I could go with it. The next things I want to get working are stereoscopic vision so I can see out of both eyes independently and I want to get some kind of simple hands working, something like a simplified version of those surgery hands. It's also very easy to get positional data out of the VR headset in Unity, so I can add some wheels or some other movement device and start moving through the environment in the next version. But it's also very easy to get excited about the potential applications of this. Imagine fully streaming your consciousness into a humanoid robot or a flying robot or a 10,000 ton mining robot. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons for your continued support. I couldn't do this without you, which is about to be especially true. Currently, I give you guys sneak peeks of future projects in progress and send out my sticker packs, but I'd love to hear your suggestions on any other content you'd like to see on Patreon. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.